What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Brene Brown, the world's leading researcher on shame, vulnerability, courage, and empathy once said, for me, vulnerability led to anxiety, which led to shame, which led to disconnection, which led to Bud Light. I'm sure you can relate to moments like Brene described, when you wanted to hide, possibly full of remorse, a better decision gone wrong, a conversation that went sideways, or that time when you knew you should have said something, but didn't. When I feel shame, my cheeks actually get hot, and I swear my ears turn red. It's like a wave that hits me. For me, it smacks me in the face and then shifts to my gut, you know, like a sucker punch, that hangs around, reminding you all about it. Have you ever felt shame as a leader? On today's episode, we're going to open up the conversation about leadership and shame and how we can stop with the self-sabotage habits and shift into acceptance so we can lead with empathy and strength. I'm going to share some real life stories of my shame and what I did to get out in front of it and stay in a mental place that assists me to thrive as a leader rather than keeping me stuck in the muck of embarrassment. But first, I'd like to thank everyone who took a moment to leave a rating and review for my recent New Year's Day birthday. I so appreciate you. I'm going to be reading them out over some upcoming episodes, starting with this five-star review that was gifted to us from Deanna Gillingham. She titled it, I didn't want a team until I listened to this podcast. She says, I was convinced having a team was more work than benefit until I started listening to this podcast. Shelly gives you what you need to lead your team in small, manageable chunks, making it doable. Since listening to Shelly, I have incorporated new team members and drum beats that have taken my business to a new level, and it was so much easier than I thought. Thank you so much, Deanna. This warms my heart because, well, you up leveled your own capabilities by stacking your team. And I'm so thrilled to hear that you introduced drum beats into your business for effectiveness and predictability for you and your team. Way to go, Deanna. It's so great to hear from you. And hey, if you're new here, let me introduce you to the show. And for those of you who tune in each week, I appreciate you. One of my goals for 2020 is to reach 100,000 or more people with downloads and get feedback from 100 of you or more. You can help by sharing the show with one person each week and then bust out your own point of view about the topic with them, keeping the conversation going. I'd also love to hear what you have to say. So let's connect on Instagram, where I'm Stacking Your Team Podcast, and on LinkedIn, where I'm Shelley Warren, too. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Stack Your Team podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach, and the chief people officer here at BizChicks Inc., where along with CEO Natalie Ekdal, we coach women entrepreneurs to grow their businesses while retaining more profit. My role here on the podcast is to assist you to ascend even higher as a leader. As you tune in each Tuesday, you'll discover my admiration for what you're trying to do in the world. And I'm keenly aware 
that you're wanting to shift from delivery of your services into more of a thought leadership role focused on business development, visibility, and simplifying your operations. So in order to do that, you need to be surrounded by those who are supporting your vision. A team of right fit people and the structure, the resources, and the tools to lead them. Let me get you all of that. You'll find out that I'm Canadian and a natural leader who shares real life experiences with you. Many learned over the 25 years leading teams at Procter & Gamble in order to accelerate your success. And although I certainly help positions within HR and training and organizational development, the largest portion of my career was in operations. That's where I scraped my knuckles more than once in the trenches, learning how to lead people and turn around performance. I also spent many years in project management, leading specialized technical teams to deliver million dollar product supply projects for billion dollar brands. Those experiences taught me how to handle big pressure, big decisions, big money, big expectations, and of course, big teams. I'm also that coach who has real life business experiences coaching local small business owners and volunteer teams for many years. And I'll be the first one to serve up some tough love. But the thing you really need to know about me is that I'm here for you. So let's create a space today where it's okay for leaders to talk openly about shame. Here we go. Are you a fan of Brene Brown? I am. Through her many books, her conversations with Oprah, her infamous TED Talk, and her recent Netflix special, she's making it mainstream, even comical, to talk about shame, vulnerability, and courage. Her new podcast, the Unlock Us podcast, is coming in March. You can subscribe to it already on Apple Podcasts, and she's got hundreds of reviews with only a two minute trailer. (laughs) Well, you know, she is Renee Brown. She's also reminding us that shame derives its power from being unspeakable. So today we're going to speak about the unspeakables and I invite you to DM me on Instagram or LinkedIn and tell me, how do you really feel? So first let's get grounded. As leaders, the struggle can be learning to accept that regardless of our role and the responsibility attached to it, we are human, being human, leading other humans. As leaders, we're not exempt from emotions. However, as a leader, you need to recognize that emotions are contagious and can slip on over and get absorbed by our team members especially the ones who are overly empathetic to others. Leaders are also not exempt from making mistakes, disappointing people, losing our self-awareness, and falling into the beliefs that no longer serve us. That's why developing as a leader is so important, and so is what you're trying to do in the world. So you need and deserve a high level of support as you evolve. Having a coach or a trusted mentor can be so helpful. Personal development can be your gateway to being the kind of person who's doing their very best work and in turn, having the business and the life that you desire. But too often, we tell ourselves the opposite. We tell ourselves that once we have the business we desire and the life we've always dreamed of, then we will do exactly what we want You know, take those big risks, step up really high, do breakthrough work, set our personal lives in balance, and then boy, oh boy, will we ever be the leader and the business owner that we are meant to be. Do you see how backwards that kind of thinking is? It's actually the opposite that's true. It's be, do, have, not the other way around. Jim Fortin is an incredible sales technique teacher who uses what he calls neuropersuasion and that be-do-have model. I encourage you to take a few moments 
and put your own be, do, have thought model together so that it serves you well as you continue to evolve as a leader. And by the way, I would love to help you to do this. So message me on any social media platform that you like and let's get that conversation going. So in keeping with our grounding, I'm going to share with you some personal stories of shame and some examples from our clients. And let's see if any of these resonate with you. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Everyone is on their own journey of personal development. Everyone's at their own pace. Here's one of those stories. Natalie and I were recently chatting and she told me that she felt shame surrounding my decision to hit the reset button on my word of the year, Harmony. She felt shame because as my boss, she was unable to, and I'm air quoting here, give me that last year. Yet here's the thing. I was feeling shame because as a leader, I had done a poor job of setting boundaries within my home, specifically with my mother, and my work life, and not holding myself accountable to my ideal calendar. So I was blowing off time blocking. I was wrecking my sleep goals, my health goals, and my Flow Friday goals were very hit and miss. I was not upholding what I teach. As a leader, I was not a role model at all. I was not pouring into my cup so I could pour into others. And I was feeling so ashamed. The truth here is that Natalie was taking her commitment to me seriously and her desire to provide harmony was high. Yet due to some personal circumstances in her life, which she talked about openly on episode 404, which was her sixth anniversary podcast edition, our team stepped up to support her. And that was so right for us to do. Life happens. And it's certainly okay for me to take another run at using the word harmony to bring me back to center and to invest in my life designed for 2020. And by the way, the word invest is Natalie's word for the year 2020. I think it's so great that the words we chose as our guiding lights are perfect for us individually as we move forward, kickstarting a new decade. And as Maya Angelou taught us, when we know better, we do better. So that's exactly what Natalie and I are both doing, focused on doing better, starting with investing in ourselves, then our team, then the business and our clients. No shame given, no shame taken. We are set to co-create and delight our clients and community by holding space for each other to keep it real. You know, creating this episode has really bubbled up some memories for me. There was that time in my corporate career when one of my university co-op students, let's call him Thomas, cried his eyes out so bad that I had to run out of the one-to-one room to get him a box of facial tissue. I failed to realize that he was not used to being given constructive feedback about his performance. He wouldn't stop crying. It was so awful. This is a blind spot for me. I am so conditioned from a very early age to hear heavy feedback that I can compartmentalize it so that it's easier to handle and move forward with it. Thomas had not learned this skill. There wasn't any need to until now. And so because of my conditioning, I have often the tendency to lighten my feedback to others. I still address the issue, but I take great care to choose my words. That's why I am asked so often to create scripts for our clients. So here's what happened. Later in the day, I grabbed a trusted colleague of mine and I reenacted the whole conversation with him. He didn't flinch at all. He said the tone and the information that was, was exactly what the student needed and I was totally aligned to how the team was really feeling about how Thomas could improve. But I was still feeling ashamed for making that boy cry. The next morning, I met with Thomas as planned. He was much calmer and so ashamed that he had reacted in that way. We were a shameful mess. He told me that no one had ever told him about opportunity areas. He had only ever been acknowledged for his strengths and he was used to winning everything. He had called his parents the night before to talk it through. 
Oh my gosh, I was so worried. I asked him what triggered the tears. I wanted to learn from this. I mean, come on. It's not like I set out to make him cry. And he told me that it was my concern for his success. It reminded him of his dad and some of the conversations that he had had with him. Once he started to cry, he then became really worried that he was acting like a child and that I would never take him seriously ever again. Essentially, he thought he had blown it with me. I assured him that his behavior right now far outweighed his tears from yesterday, and I refocused us both on creating an action plan that he could own to address the gaps and what we refer to as his opportunity areas. You know, after all, university co-ops that came to the site for a four or six month assignment, well, they did it in hopes of getting hired on after graduation, or at least having a stellar reference and a story to tell on their resume and during interviews. So what ended up happening with Thomas? Well, a few months later, we were hosting an open house, which is an opportunity for our community and our team members to bring their kids and generally a goodwill open house opportunity for people to come in and have a tour of the site and see what it's like in a big manufacturing site like that. And Thomas comes running up to me, wanting me to come and meet his parents who had traveled down from north of Toronto to see where their son was living and working for the term. Uh Uh-huh, you guessed it. My cheeks (laughs) were on fire with shame as he brought me over to meet them. And I was so prepared to be confronted for upsetting their number one son, their wonder kid. But instead, his mom hugged me and his father shook my hand. They were both thanking me for investing in their son's development. What a moment. And Thomas couldn't stop smiling. You know, this wouldn't be the first time that men would cry in front of me at work. But more often, it was because of the overwhelming sense of shame they had and sadness because their families are breaking down due to the stress of their job. But those stories I'll say for another podcast episode. Let's hold some space for you. I am sure as a business owner, you've all had moments where shame has crept in on you. You know, Natalie and I have had clients who share with us that they're hiding debt from their families not telling the truth about the current state of the business. The weight of the debt combined with the weight of the secret is crushing them. Being able to walk them through a debt recovery plan and set them up financial resources that can assist them as they purposely move forward with a profit plan and then supporting them as they tell their loved ones about the plan is so freeing. And we've had clients tell us that they feel ashamed because they don't like certain team members anymore. Helping her discover why the change in attitude happened and what can be done to repair the relationship helps them to uncover what part of the story belongs to them and what part of the story belongs to the team member. Having this level of clarity can often release the shame and open up a fresh perspective on the whole situation. Sometimes it leads to a wonderful reset and other times it does lead to a termination. But either way, the guilt is sent packing. And are you one of those leaders who uses shame to trigger a turnaround in performance? Mm -hmm. That's a thing. When leaders take out their own frustrations and anger or when they're trying to hold tight or control, All they actually do to their team is make them feel inferior or even afraid, and it does not nurture anything but shame all around. That's why I'm such a fan of a key habit for leaders that I mentioned on episode 89, where I shared my observations of our high-performing clients. The habit of practicing self-awareness. It's the strongest foundation any leader can have. It sets us up for understanding our current emotions and our current state of mind. We can then check on ourselves and see if our attitude right now will serve us well as you're about to head into a conversation with the team member. Preparation is key because when we're rushed, we get rushed results. And is that really what you want? 
A rushed conversation to check something off our list or get your emotion off your chest or toss your to-do list onto someone else's. Cutting people off. Giving the like off the cuff but not very effective direction to a team member. I know that's not how you want to lead, but that sense of urgency, the overwhelm, can lead us to not check our own self-awareness thermometer and then we rush into a situation that can lead to shame creeping in later when we've had a chance to reflect. So what do we do? Well, one of my favorite responses to a situation that I know needs to be addressed, but I also know that my self-awareness thermometer is not optimal, is when I say, hey, let's circle back after lunch and talk this through. We both had a chance to gather our thoughts. You know, no one has ever said no to that. And why would they? After all, I'm gifting them the same time to check on their own self so that we can come together and productively solve a problem. I use this same method when someone comes to me and wants me to give them insight on something. And you know, here's another story. I don't have a PhD, nor an MBA, and that used to be a fact that I kept under wraps. I had believed that my career would be stalled if the hierarchy knew. The shame came from a time I was in the ladies room and a new university grad who was attending the leadership college that I was hosting told a gathering of her peers who were also in the program and also in the ladies room that I didn't have an MBA. So to not take what I was saying too seriously, after all, what does she really know? It was a classic mean girl behavior moment. I was in the stall. I stayed in the stall. I stayed there quietly until they all had left, feeling so ashamed. And instead of confronting her or declaring out loud in front of the entire class about the truth, I chose to bury it. And that brought on, you guessed it, more shame. The funny thing is, that new hire was the only person in over 25 years, who ever asked me about my so-called credentials? Ever. Was it because she spread the story around and everyone then knew the truth, so why bring it up again? Or was it that no one really cared? Or was it that people let my contribution and my reputation speak for me? The truth is that my career never suffered because of my lack of a BA, an MBA, or a PhD. You know, shame is so personal. It takes a strong leader to sit with it. Even when your cheeks are on fire and pull back the curtain to see what it's all about. Where are these feelings of inadequacy, embarrassment, humiliation, and disappointment coming from? Can we rationally look at it and see where the truth is and where the fabricated truth is, stirring up those beliefs of self-doubt that can cloud our judgment so often? Can we be vulnerable with our team and ask for help without losing control of our emotions in front of them? Because sharing too much information with our team can also lead to shame jumping on over to others, especially those who are overachievers or those team members who have their own issues with shame and will die trying to seek your approval. Can we face our team member and say, what I did was wrong and here's my plan to correct the situation? Can you give yourself some grace and accept that you are not perfect and no one expects you to be? Can you decide today that moving into this new decade, you're ready to invest in your own personal development so that you can be equipped with resources, tools, guidance, and reframes on your thoughts that will help you ascend even higher as a leader? Can you choose you and accept all of you for who you are today and where you're going. Your team is ready to support you. You only need to ask them to stick with you as you learn, grow, and evolve as a leader. No shame given, no shame taken. And I would love a moment to affirm you. You are worth having as much harmony in your life that you want. You are worth investing in your own personal development. 
you are worth getting the help you need to take inspired action to close a loop, solve a problem with your business, your team, or your life. You are worth it. I am a big fan of what you're trying to do in the world. You can feel all the emotions the universe has available to you and use that energy for good. So I leave you to consider this. On the Stacking Your Team podcast, no topic is off topic. We dive into how to hire, fire, and inspire your team so that you can create a team of high-performing people around you, providing you the space, the support, and the expertise that you need to flourish as a leader of your business. Tune in each Tuesday and be sure to also subscribe to our sister podcast, The Biz Chicks Podcast, hosted by Natalie Akdal, who launches a new episode each Thursday. Get your double dip of Biz Chicks with both our podcasts. And hey, would you like to take what you've learned here on the podcast and apply it directly into your business and your team with me right there to guide you and right there to answer your questions? Then reach out to me. I have a few spots open for one-to-one coaching, and I try and save a few strategy sessions also tucked away in my calendar for people who need individual help immediately when our programs are full. I'm here for you. So if this aligns to your 2020 goals, reach out to me at Shelly at bizchicks.com. That's Shelly with an I at B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com. And I'll send you an intake form so that you can tell me about your business, your team, and what looks like helped you. I'll then circle back with you and we'll get together on a call and talk about what a custom one-to-one coaching plan would look like for you. You can also visit the website at B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com. That's bizchicks dot com slash strategy to catch a mini video that Nally and I did for you. Okay. So it's not Netflix worthy, but we sure had some fun creating it for you. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Stacking Your Team. Please click subscribe in your podcast app so you never miss an episode and head on over to bizchicks.com slash join to get access to the private Facebook group we host for women entrepreneurs. It is a virtual gathering space for the kindest, smartest, and most savvy women entrepreneurs around the globe who are scaling their businesses and stacking their teams. The group is free to join. And when you do, you get access to the complimentary downloads associated with both of our podcasts. We include the links in our weekly newsletter. Again, go to bizchicks.com slash join. That's B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com slash J-O-I-N to get access. And listen to us every Tuesday for a new episode of Stacking Your Team and Thursdays for a new episode of the BizChicks podcast. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, you are the leader your company needs and you are worthy of being CEO. Stay focused, biz chicks, and go stack your team.